Hey guys, it's Matt. The topic of this video is, we know that movies are being made bad on purpose, and now we know why. We know movies are being bad, being bad, being made bad on purpose, and now we know why. Now, I don't claim credit on a lot of things. You know I don't. I try to stay humble here, even though I'm real proud of my John Macro, you cannot be serious, things like, I have a few things I bring to the table, but this one, I will say, this was mine. I would be the first one to say, wait, right after The Force Awakens, I don't think it was waiting for that second stinker from Ryan Johnson, um, which was The Last Jedi. He should be basically taken to Papillon for putting that thing forth. I said, there's no possible way a company like Disney that has access to the greatest creative minds in the world could put forth these absolute stinking pieces of horse shit. There's no possible way. I will take credit for it. Now, one quick thing before we get started. I've mentioned several times my iMovie program, the reason I bought this iMac, has been corrupted for over 12 months, over a year. It miraculously opened the other day. I've tried everything over 12 months. I've uh, deleted the program, make sure I'm deleting all files, I have other programs to make sure you clean out all files before I re-upload. It just didn't work, whatever. I went to CapCut and other programs. Well, of course, it just miraculously opened, and then I was playing with the trailer feature on Friday. Produces those slick trailers. Well, as I'm loading it, and then I saw some of the comments, I went, people are going to like expect some big production or something. Now, I don't know why, because it's not possible with, I mean, if you count the trailer, it's seven videos this week, one every day. There's no time for a big production. Nobody wants this channel to go to one video every two to three weeks and make it like some professional production. And even so, that wouldn't matter anyway, because I'd go to get one little clip from a movie and YouTube would say, banned worldwide or blocked worldwide. I can't, I can't use clips. So anyway, um, nobody wants that sort of thing anyway. It's more about the information, the sharing of information with commenters. I hope there was, I think some people expect some big production here. I don't know. Well, maybe the little blue people come in the middle of the night and help me. I don't know when the time would be for that. What you going to get? You're going to get GIFs and GIFs. You're going to, I'll put, make a big production. GIFs and GIFs is what you, is all I can put forth. GIFs and GIFs. I don't know what the damn name is. The, the information, guys, let's say I'm right about this. Let's say when I got wind that movies are being made bad on purpose, and we now uh, know the reason for it. Let's just say I'm right about this. I'm hoping the, you know, the, the reality uh, reveal is, is more important than a slick production. I'm sure it is to most of you. I just had to say that based on some of the comments that came in yesterday. So let's, Matt, let's get started. Stop with this war shit. Sorry. To all the thousands of people that say I'm long-winded and I need to get to the point which I've labeled bathroom boys, I'm going to give you exactly what you want and what you deserve in this video. I'm going to be long-winded on the back end for people who want to hang out and talk about all the potential possibilities. Here's the if you if you got to go in the bathroom or do something else, you got a stack of magazines in there. Here it is. Here, very simple. The first part of the answer we knew about a year ago that the AI would come at some point and save the day, would make movies great again, like making America great again. The AI would be the savior because you have all these channels, all the critical drinker minions and alkalites saying, bad writers, they can't write, they push their agendas, whatever. The AI is positioned, we knew this about a year ago and we talked about it, to save the day. But now with new information coming out, it seems crystal clear what's going to happen. OpenAI is one of the leading AI companies for large language models, or LLMs, chat GPT, which is, of course, always listening to me in real time, even before upload. Okay, OpenAI now has a some sort of program where images that were made or made from, uh, you've heard me talk about Stable Diffusion and DALE, and there's many of these AI image generation programs. Those images then can be made into video. Well, they've had this for several months, but it's just a four or five second video, very blurry, very choppy. Somehow, boom, overnight now, one to two, three minute videos, almost perfect clarity, and this is their first shot at it. This is the beta version, is that what you call it? The first try looks this good. Folks, kids in their bedroom inside of a year from now will be able to produce movies themselves on their computer in their bedroom. Movies have been so bad, and generally entertainment, so bad in this century that people will be inspired that they can do it better themselves. And this is exactly what the Not Nilk wants. Now, the movie studios, in my opinion, will always exist. Okay, there, they will, Certain things the movie studios will do, like 
the showing you what they can do like an Oppenheimer that somebody will not be able to do from their bedroom, no matter what tools they have. They just don't have the skills. They, they just, you know, the actors of the AI is never going to look like that lead actor. I forget his name. who's an excellent actor for Oppenheimer. That's 10, 15 years away. The movie studios will be counted on for these monster blockbusters. But for everything else, people are inspired to do it themselves. And why, Matt, why would they want to destroy the major Hollywood companies or they transition to other things or lock in with all their old content and make money on their streaming services? But it will not, the future is people making movies themselves using these types of AI programs that, of course, have been free to the public and are always free, right? If it's free, then the product is you. Why? Because, the alt, again, the Not Milk is a planner. Fred Thompson, The Hunt for Red October. Of course, most actors become U.S. senators. Ronald Reagan, governor, became president. This is very normal. Fred Thompson, he says to, he says to Alec Baldwin, remember he plays the Admiral, son, the Ruskies don't take a dump without a plan. Okay, the not milk don't take a digital zero and, zeros and ones dump without a 20, 30, or 40-year plan. It needs millions of people making their own videos just like it got hundreds of millions of people now making their own AI images. And why? Because the AI needs to learn from the real human being. The more real human beings make these videos themselves, it sees what prompts are put in, it sees what people like and what it doesn't, even though the people produce, that will produce these movies on the AI video generation platforms, they're not doing it pixel by pixel, or they're not doing it via coding, they're doing it via prompts and keywords. The AI will learn. It needs, in order for the AI to learn, it needs tens of millions of people trying to make their own movies. Now this is basically the biggest case that's almost I've ever seen where you see a segment of the truth community saying, Matt, you know what's behind the final door of Not Nilk? Some sort of AI supercomputer, some sort of AI, they say, they say, is already here overwriting reality or presenting its magenta or whatever it may be. Now, I never really bought into that. I never took it off the table. I would never take anything off the table. I consider myself an open-minded big thinker. Uh, but I never put a lot of stock in it either. There was no real evidence of that. Where was or where is the evidence that the final bad guy in the police lineup, what I've labeled not Nilk, is some sort of AI that's been here a long time? Okay, it's a scary sci-fi story. But this actually, you know, feeds into that theory a bit. It doesn't mean that what we call not Nilk doesn't see the AI as its tool to accomplish its final goals and it's developing AI, does it? But I'm just saying it keeps that theory on the table a little bit more than it's been in the past. So one of the main concepts behind this theory is the AI continuously needs to learn. In order for the AI to learn, it, let's just say to do whatever creepy not Nilk wants to do to the human, say... 40 years from now, 50 years from now, merge into the digital environment, take the brain ship, whatever it may be, it, it sees the not milk or what we call not milk sees the AI, in my opinion, as its bridge to get to where it needs to go. And whether the AI has always been here or not, it doesn't matter. It seems like this phase of AI is a major, uh, let's just say, it's like a ninth inning relief the relief pitcher it brings in to close the game, to close the game out on the real human being. What does that mean, Matt? I don't know, trapping him in some sort of Ray Kurzweil digital environment, some sort of digital hell. Who knows? It, does, it doesn't matter because you and I aren't going to participate in it. So the AI will be this final bridge to, quote, get it done. Now, whatever it needs to get done, whatever creepy thing, it's a, it's a really scary thought to think about. It needs the AI to learn. It cannot learn on its own in some Microsoft simulation room with Bill Gates coming by to feed it powdered donuts every so often. It cannot learn isolated. I never bought this crap where OpenAI would say, we didn't give chat GPT access to the internet past 2020. What, what, how, what are you even talking about? That makes no sense. So somebody can go communicate with chat GPT on the internet, but it had no access to the internet. What? What, what does that even mean? What? Whatever. Okay. It cannot. It needs to interact. There's only one thing that matters in this reality. It always comes back to the same thing, guys, and it's the best news 
of all time. Only one thing that matters here, and the Not Nilk shows it to you every single chance it gets, the real consciousness of the real human, the real spiritual being, whether there's 144,000 or 144 or 14.4 of us. It always has to come back to us. Here we go again, the greatest news of all time. It needs to interact with real people to learn. Just like Dale in Stable Diffusion, the image generation. Oh, put it out for free. Put it out for free. That means the product's you. It has so many millions of people pissed off at the movie studios for ruining my Star Wars, ruining my superhero characters, putting in your diversity and your woke and all that. It will inspire those millions to say, I'm, let's do it ourselves. And the AI needs that because it will learn Every time, what are they going to go do it on themselves with their own programs? No, they're going to use the Not Nilk's own systems. They're going to use the Not Nilk's own programs. And OpenAI slash, is it called Sarah? Whatever it might be, that's the, producing the video from the images. And guess what? What did they take down and destroy first? They destroyed the genres of movies that the tech those types of people that will make their own movies on their computers that understand these sorts of technologies, they took that part of movie making down first, although there's no good movies across the board anymore. But they've really ruined the superhero genre. They've really ruined all the things that those types of people that are comfortable going in, into uh, open AI and chatting with chat GPT and loading up stable diffusion and people like, you know, our friend Greg, who he didn't pay 20 bucks a month for mid journey. You, it's like 20 bucks a month or whatever it was. You could do unlimited, I don't know, maybe 30 bucks, unlimited, incredible HD images. He, he was just one of these people who's like, I'm going to do it myself. I'm not going to pay mid journey, journey, mid, mid journey, mid journey. So the stable diffusion, he went. It, it's it's completely open source, but you have to know what you're doing. So why did they completely ruin the comic book characters? And you, they, the people say you ruined my Star Wars. So we're going to do it ourselves. It wants people to take action on their own because the AI needs to continuously learn. Now, not learn for whatever we're talking about here, movies, for its ultimate goal. It, remember, the Ruskies don't take a dump, son, without a plan. Remember, its goal is 50 years from now. That's the way it thinks. Its goal is somehow putting the real spiritual being into a digital environment, of which at that point, it may have just horcroxed itself off from itself, maybe permanently. No consequences, people. I don't. I think there's some consequences. Look how evil this thing that we study is. Look how crafty it is. Look how nasty it is. There's no consequences. You know, hey, they make some good points. They've uh, they've rubbed off on me to a degree, but I'm going to act like there is consequences. I don't think there's harm in playing it safe. Its its goal is 30, 40, 50 years from now. It doesn't care one bit about Hollywood or profits. They don't stock company. No, Matt, somebody would come in, like a friend of mine or somebody in my family, say, Matt, don't you know? These are stock companies. They need to make profits. They're not going to put out something bad on purpose. No, I, I had no idea. I'll just shut the toll channel down right now. I had no idea they're stock companies. And at least according to you, they have to make a profit. So because they have to make a quarterly profit for shareholders, everything I'm saying is just completely off the table. Profit for shareholders? Quarterly profits? Worried about Wall Street? You've got to be kidding me. Come on, sir. They sit at the same table with the same creeps that run the Fed, the people that make up money, trillions a second. Well, Matt, what if Disney really does fail or they have a major movie studio go under because people are tired of the woke messaging and people aren't going out to the theater anymore and the movie taverns are empty? Well, will that mean you're wrong? No, it won't. It will mean, as usual, they make whatever story, 50-year plan they have in place, they'll make it look good. So what if one of the big, even if Disney goes down or goes under, they have to make it look good. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I was wrong about anything. Actually, pro probably proves, proves I'm right. Matt, with that rationale, you can basically get out of anything. If this unforeseen circumstance happens, oh, Matt will just say, well, they had to make it look good. That's exactly what they, we would expect them to do. Uh, say whatever you want. They, they, you know what? 7-Eleven, the big job application day in 2001, when there was a big event in 2001 for anybody new that doesn't understand our hobo code, they made it look good. You know, they didn't just, it wasn't just a paper airplane flying around that they said, oh my God, this is the, uh, the color from outer space. They made it look good, didn't they? Yeah, I, well, why, if, if this is the next phase, 
the AI is where they're putting all their chips to get that human to horcrux their own soul off into Voldemort's snake or whatever. They're going to make it look good. So maybe Time Warner and Disney will both go under. Well, who cares? You think that it matters one bit to not milk? It's all part of a script that was planned out probably before your grandfather was born. Come on, sir. Okay, I'm not going to go back over all that. It probably was a bit all over the place. I'll slow down a bit. Here's the premise. To me, it's very clear. I'll look to your comments. Maybe this is the day you finally determine that I've lost it. We know, at least as of The Force Awakens, probably long before that, probably the entire century, we know for sure that movies are being made bad on purpose. Who's in on it? Who knows what? We'll talk about that some other time. Generally, we agree, everybody here, they could do much better. Therefore, to whatever your definition, it's on purpose. Bad movie making on purpose. They have to put on all the woke and the SJW stuff. They know, of course, it's going to piss off their entire fan base. It's meant to piss off their fan base. The key part of this video is why. Why have they been pissing off their key fan bases? We didn't quite understand it until now. Because the platforms and the AI programs exist so people can go do it themselves. They can get so pissed off that they're, they, my Star Wars was ruined, my Spider-Man was ruined, my Hulk now just sits around the fire campfire singing Kumbaya, telling friendly jokes, and all the rage is gone. My She-Hulk just twerks uh, in the office. They're so pissed off, it will inspire millions to go try to do it themselves, using the platforms that the Not Nilk provides, using the AI programs. It, this is how the AI needs to learn. It cannot learn on its own in a Microsoft simulation room with Bill Gates serving at glazed donuts. It has to interact as closely as possible with the real spiritual human being. And then that human needs to choose to interact with it. Can't just break down the human's door. It puts out incredible AI tools. Millions of people are now on the waiting list, I'm sure, for OpenAI's Sarah video from Image. And then there'll be hundreds of millions. And people will start producing little shorts and movies that are pretty darn good. And it could implode a few of the major movie studios. And if it does, it's all by design. I'm not joking if anybody thinks I'm... Do I sound crazy to you? Anybody stumbled upon this video looking for cats? Okay, it's Sora, whatever. OpenAI slash Sora, I believe it is. Did anybody waste a comment on that? Did, really? I think what I'm saying is clear to most of you, but I'm not sure. I really have no idea how this is coming out. I think it's crystal clear, but just to be sure, another way to do the summary is you do it from the perspective of the guy from Skokie that stumbled upon this video, and we'll do it like that. Do a different summary coming at it from a roundabout way or from a different direction. So this guy would be like, uh, Mr. Narrator presenting this, uh, you're really smart, you think, and you say it's 22 mile to Davenport. So let me get this straight. Um, Hollywood companies that are all stock companies that all need to make profits and please shareholders on a quarterly basis, you say, because you say 22 mile to Davenport, you say that they're making movies at least for 10, 12, 15 years or more, maybe the entire century, making movies bad on purpose to piss off their own fan bases just so the fan bases can take can uptake this new technology now that allows them or will allow them very soon to create short movies and eventually within three to five years full production movies on their own which could lead to the implosion of a few of these Hollywood studios that you say sit at the creepy table with the bad guys but now it says the ultimate bad guys want to put their friendly bad guys out of business you're really smart 22 mile to Davenport and you say all of this is so the AI can learn by interacting with real people with the ultimate goal being to get real people to somehow choose to lock themselves away in some sort of digital hell like the little box that was presented by the the Cenobites in Hellraiser do I have that right yeah that's pretty good I don't know where you came from and what part of Skokie but that's exactly what I'm saying that's a hell of a summary now, many of you in the old guard may be saying, like usual, like, yeah, I could see that. That's that's pretty, yeah, that's good insight, Matt, but it's not as crazy as you think. I mean, yeah, I could see that. That's, you know, that's, that's normal for not milk nowadays. Okay, I, I appreciate if you guys see it that way, or many of you, but I do need to make a case here. You know, will this be the one video that ever breaks out of the little box that this play platform has put me in? 
with 11 to 20 new subscribers a month. Is this the one video? Maybe some of you could link to it at Nerdrotic or Critical Drinker or Disparu or Thor Skywalker, all these movie reviewers. Matt, it sounds like you watch. I do watch them. I told you when I eat my Wawa, Italian sub oil, not mayo, I, I do want that mindless horse shit. I do want the mindless critical drink or whatever. I just, I don't want to think, I don't want to study dark, in the way I am starting dark reality because I watch this mindless horse shit also for a reason. What is being presented through culture and what is the pushback that the not milk wants? See, that's the thing. Matt, the not milk wants nerdrotic and critical drinker and Disparu ripping everything and saying how bad everything is and saying how horrible Book of Boba Fett is and the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series and the new Ahsoka. They want them saying how bad. Of course, the not milk wants all of these negative themed movie reviewers saying how bad everything is. We know that these movie reviewers in ripping everything, of course, is doing exactly what the not milk wants. Now, who's aware of it? Very few of them. The critical drinker would have to be aware of his role in all this. Probably not. Uh, the Not Nilk has used a lot of people a lot higher up, uh, like, say, um, U.S. senators, where they, where they thought they actually were trying to help and instead playing in exactly to what this thing we call Not Nilk wants. We're learning as the years go by, very few are in on it consciously. It's more of a download a frequency, a radio station tuned into where the people think they're acting on their own or doing what they think is best, even with helpful, altruistic intentions where we know or we can see that it's exactly what the not milk wants. All of these movie reviewers, I don't think they're getting like, like secret paychecks from DARPA. I don't think it works that way. Okay, we're, It doesn't matter anyway. Either way, the critical drinker and all the minions and alkalites underneath him that rip every new series that comes out, that rip every new movie, and they deserve to be, first off, they deserve to be ripped. They are terrible. But we know now that this army of negative movie reviewers is exactly what this not milk wants. And this presentation to them would be insane. And their positions would seem very rational and logical. So they'd come back to me, if I could speak for them, they're at the podium here that doesn't exist, they'd say, so let me get this straight, Matt, or this quantum of whatever, quantum of egghead asshole, let me get this straight. So you you agree with us, and I'm now the movie reviewers speaking, I'm speaking on behalf of the movie reviewers that aren't actually at the Billy Madison podium, they would say, so you agree with us, Matt, that these movies and these series put out on Disney+, Plus, etc., absolute trash, rings of power, horrible. And I'd be at the podium and I would say, yes, I agree with you that they're absolutely horrible. We agree. And they'd say, okay, so we have platforms on YouTube, they would say, that rip these horrible movies and shows and we tell people not to watch. And we try to inspire the movie studios to do better. And we point out how nobody wants this social justice warrior stuff and nobody wants this woke stuff. We agree, Matt, that you don't want that in your movies either, right? And I would say, yeah, I agree. So we have a platform that rips it, tells people not to watch it, pushes back, gives people a voice, and that's somehow working for Not Nilk. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry you can't see it. First and foremost, the Not Nilk this dark thing here that we study that just simply its role is to distract a human being from what it's supposed to do in life, in this reality. It's one of its main tactics that it always falls back to when it's highly successful and it always works when it's able to do this is create camps. Takes two ends of the magnet, right? Polarity, duality, two to tango. Friction needs two balloons rubbing together. You rub, well, it needs, it needs a big, hair, big head of hair you rub your balloon on or whatever to, to let it stick to the wall or whatever the hell it does. It needs two things. It creates camps. Separate issue, but here's a good example. Eva and I emailed back and forth the other day about, is it the Attorney General of Florida or the, the um, Surgeon General of Florida, the, the top medical person? It doesn't matter. Uh, somebody that's just a few steps down from uh, fraud, Governor DeSantis, uh, and that fake Republican conservative presentation uh, came out and said, Matt, look at this. Why is this? Could this actually be somebody on our side saying how um, kind of uh, bad that the bo punky boost of you go get the punky boosters, you get the you go in for more C of the me 19 updates and all that. It, ha it could have human DNA and it's very bad and nobody in the state should get more shots and this and that. And, and we're going back and forth. Could this actually be somebody high level that's actually saying what we want said? No. Okay. 
yes, they are saying what we want said, but there's no possible way somebody high level up in a state government is working for you. Let me repeat that. It's not possible in this reality for somebody high level, Congress, Senate, state government, to break free of the system and now be working for you. It's not possible. It creates camps. Just when too many, we talked about this many times when they came out with the Carl Weathers movie and the renting at the blockbuster of the Action Jacksonation movie. If everybody was running out to do it, they didn't want everybody to do it. They need friction camps. Then they would introduce um, adverse events through uh, Tucker Carlson or through Senator Fraud Johnson or whatever. You think any of the, through RFK Jr., do you, you really think someone at that level could be working for you? Let me, let me go back in case anybody's new. One last time, it is not possible in this reality that somebody at a high level is working for you. It would never be allowed by Not Milk. They say what you would say, what we want to hear, so they get that they needed 80% to do it. They needed 20%. Maybe their percentages were 85, 15, punky booster, 15% not. But they needed the 15% not to really see how bad it is or to believe how bad it is or to fight with the 85% that was pushing it. The not milk survives, I mean, not just thrives, it lives off camps and the friction it creates. So the not milk has access to millions and millions of Terra pancake flops of data per second. If it sees too many people are actually in love with Dr. F's uh, presentations and what the CDC is presenting, and everybody's going along a little too nice, then that's when it comes forth and it puts out its adverse events, and it creates, it gives fuel to the other camp that opposes it. That's exactly what's going on with whatever it is, the Attorney General, the Surgeon General Smoker of Florida. It, it needs it's it's fueling the fire of the camp that pushes back because the not milk to survive it needs to to tango. That's how it harnesses its energy here in this reality system. So sidebar one minute lesson for anybody that's new that just came in from clearing fields. If you hear somebody at the top of Hollywood or the top of corporate life or the top of government or close to the top, like this person just under DeSanta, somebody at that level that seems to be saying things that you once said, it's not serving the goals that you think it is. Okay, enough said on that. I don't think that rule, in my opinion, has ever been broken. I don't think it ever will be broken. We've talked about this concept many times, but it's worth bringing into our movies and Ruined on Purpose and with the AI and everything we're talking about here, it's worth bringing into this conversation that when the not milk does, anybody in the back of the room, put those spitballs down, in the back of the room, put, put, move them, move them, let those people that were clearing fields sit in the back. They came in late. You in the back with the spitballs. When the not milk does something, how many goals do they get out of it? Is it ever just, is it, let's just, let me just put it, is it ever just one thing? No, that's right, back of the class. They never just get one thing out of it. They get two, three, four things out of it. So what we're talking about now, movies made bad on purpose, related to the AI, com something completely different that they get out of it. By putting in, let's say, woke themes, social justice warrior, making sure that there's representation and making the little mermaid not white and all this stuff, all right? Number one, of course they know it's going to piss everybody off other than that fringe group that wants it. They know nobody wants it. Not even the black community doesn't want a black little mermaid. They don't want it either. Nobody wants it. Because all these themes and diversity and all this stuff is pushed so hard in the last 10 years through Not Milk Media, LGB, all that stuff. Uh, Bruce, he became Caitlin. All that stuff is pushed, pushed, pushed in your face. Get up in your business. In your, I don't want it. It's in my, Greg's like, get that horse shit out of my face all the time. Because it's pushed so hard. It's not, people believe, your neighbor, for example, your best friend believes that they're just pushing because they want the diversity. They're pushing it so people start to hate it. Let me repeat that. They put it in your face so much. They're, they're, it's evil genius. It knows that people will not just hate the horrible production or the series or the movie, they will hate the causes being pushed. So LGB, what, for example, Greg and I talk all the time. We don't care one bit about that topic. Go do what you want. 
You want to go be with this person, that person? You want to do this? You want to go try to have a relationship with a chameleon somewhere on a rock? Go ahead. We don't care. Freedom. Do whatever you want. Because it's pushed so much, you start to hate the, the agenda itself. You start to hate the people associated with it. I'm telling you they know this, and they're evil genius and in the extreme, and nobody but us can see it. It's so damn frustrating how our friends and family have their head up their ass on this. It's so easy to see. It's pushed so hard. It gets up in your business so much. Everybody starts to hate, not the movie, to hate the cause itself and the people associated with that cause. Now, what is, let's not forget the main point, camps, friction. It's how this reality, the dark part, lives eats and satiates itself. It's so damn simple. It's it's kind of dark, but you know what? Overall, you know what I'm going to say? I'm not just saying to make myself feel good. Miami Weiss, number one new show in Vladislava. It's the best news for real people and real spirits of all time. Comcast Cable Service does this. I think it does it all year long. I don't think it's just because it's February Black History Month. I've seen this many times where it's not even related to Black History Month. It'd just be a whole channel or between your channels on the guide. It'll say, click here, celebrate diversity. And many times I've thought, I don't know if one person has ever clicked, just let's just click here and celebrate diversity wherever what whole of the internet it ta- or whole of TV production it takes you. Who knows where it takes you? Lifetime TV? Where does it take you if I click that? You know, it's like between channel six is ABC. Then one up will be fought. In between, sometimes it'll have this channel bar. It says celebrate diversity or whatever the theme or the repressed people of the month that you can you can click on this channel bar all over the place. Where I don't know where it takes you if you click it, but I thought many times not one person on earth has probably ever clicked that. So, so you're looking for whatever tomorrow. You're looking for the um, the NASCAR um, Daytona 500, or you're looking for the skating championships, or the precursor to the Olympics, or or whatever a John Wayne movie, and you're looking for whatever. And you oh, it's like in, right out of Tommy Boy. Oh, Petrified Forest. Oh, this is cool. Oh, let's. It, Let's in celebrate diversity? Oh, I'm going to change my plans on what I was going to watch this afternoon. I'm saying it's possible not one person in the history of the world has ever clicked that channel. And it knows it. It's just there to piss everybody off. Now, of course, everybody's not in on it. Like we've talked about, hardly anybody is in on it. This is the definition of useful idiot. The people deciding on production at Disney and some of these movie studios or at Comcast Cable, somehow the Not Elk has gotten the people that believe in these social justice themes and the Karens and the, the woke people. It, it's put these useful idiots into positions where they will ruin it on behalf of Not Elk. It is very possible. See, I don't want anybody to think, oh, Kathleen Kennedy, she really could make a great Star Wars. And they go into a dark room and go, ha ha, we're going to get those people today by putting out bad production. Get that Ray character back in here, the most unlikable little girl in the history of the world. Get that Ray back in here, that little vile creature. No, they don't. They, it puts the not, no, it puts they're the useful idiots into position where they're actually, they're going to ruin it. The not, no, knows they're going to ruin it just by acting for them normally, which by any normal standard is abnormal, if you see what I mean. They're not in on it. They're not saying, ha, 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 ha we're going to get them today by putting out more bad content when we really could put out good content. Not at all. The not no puts these assholes, these wackos into positions of power. The not no knows they'll ruin it on their own, trying their very best because they can't help themselves. That way, Everybody's in on it because they're on a frequency, yet consciously nobody's in on it. Nobody knows the ultimate plan of not milk, in my opinion. Yeah, I understand how insane that sounds if you're looking for cat videos. So if reality is like, in this regard, media and movies, is like a movie itself, the setup would be the last 10 to 15 years, and it is that patient. The setup for maybe decades, laying down the conditions so when the time is right, the humans go act the way the not milk wants them to act. So you set up the condition for everybody to flock to the AI to produce their own movies over the next five to seven to ten years. The condition is destroy every beloved franchise. Star Wars, destroyed. Star Trek, destroyed. Terminator franchise, destroyed. I mean, every single live-action remake of the old Disney classics destroyed it. It was there to destroy it. I love The Little Mermaid. When I stayed with my uncle in San Diego for a summer, it was in, I think it was in the summer of 1991, I was a junior at Penn State, went out there, 
uh, for three months. He invited me out. It was a great little little trip, respite away from King of Prussia, <laughs> Pennsylvania. I remember my little cousin. She was, I don't know, she was like five or something. She played it all the time. Little Mermaid loved it. Still love it. That live action remakes are there to destroy the original. The last three Star Wars are there to destroy the original. It's, it's put something out great, and then it works to destroy it. Now, that's a whole separate video, and it strays from what we're talking about here. Remember the theme here. Establish the conditions where people will flock to the AI tools to make their own movies, to say, Hollywood, I'm done with you. I'm leaving you behind. The conditions, look how patient it is. Condition, let's say over the last 15 years, but potentially the whole century is establishing the condition for what's being set up right now. And sure, some of my examples, or most of my examples, are too uh, sci-fi-based or comic book character-based because that's typically what the negative movie reviewers like Nerd Roddick, they cover the comic book characters and Marvel and Star Wars and things like that, okay? But, you know, I, I used to like those movies when they were good, but name any serious drama that's good. They're all ruined across the board. Back in the day, I watched real movies. I'm Dangerous Liaisons pops into my head, a very young Uma Thurman and um, was it John Malkovich saying, what was that mantra he, he put out? It's beyond my control. It's, I mean, it's, it's classic. I like those dramas. It's beyond, I must break with you, Michelle Pfeiffer. It's beyond my control. It just drove her crazy. She went literally crazy. And they just, they just play with people's lives. Malkovich and Glenn Close. Who names a little girl Glenn? Little girl in a little pink blanket. Would you name her? Susie or Glenn? What the hell? Matt, you keep talking about Glenn Close and Merle Streep. It's short for Glenda or something. Glenda the Good Witch. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware. I'm aware. Maybe she should have stuck with Glenda, though. It doesn't give no fuel to the fire for the Paco Taco Waco Army. So I liked Dangerous. I liked dramas and stuff. Sling Blade, a, a wonderful movie. All those great movies. I'm not just, it's not just the comic book character movies. And Matt, who cares about that stuff anyway? The sci fi. They're all, they all suck moose today. Every one or two years, there's like one movie, like a drama that's any good, but it wouldn't be anything if it came out in the 90s. The movie The Dig is that Netflix or Prime. It's got, I always confuse the actor. It's not Benjamin Cucumber Batch. It's that guy that he was in Red Dragon, one of the Silence of the Lambs movies, a dollar hide or whatever, the guy that ate the damn William Blake painting, the Red Dragon just shoved in his mouth, tried to eat the painting. Remember that guy? I always confuse him with Cucumber Batch as an actor or whatever. Only five or six British actors play the same parts over and over again. Anyway, that guy is in the dig. You know, it's a solid, good movie. But because we're so devoid of anything, a movie like The Dig that's really just average seems great to us today. There's a movie that pops into my head with Mel Gibson as a professor trying to create the first dictionary or preserve words or something like that. And is it Sean Penn is either in prison or an insane asylum, but he's like um, an, an well, a, a, let's just say an autistic regarding word uh, etymology and lineage, and he ends up helping Mel Gibson, who's got this big beard, and he's a per I don't, you know what? It's a solid movie if you see it today. You saw it in the 90s. You'd say, what is this horse shit? Let's walk out of the theater. It looks good today because we're so devoid. It's like a, it's like a, if you're starving or thirsty in the desert, a muddy old glass of water all of a sudden seems good. That's the situation we're in today with movies. I'm not joking. All right, let's return to the original premise. It laid the conditions down. This thing here we study, this, this thing we seek to understand, laid down the conditions in what an old person like me calls the new century for movies across the board to be absolutely horrible, for everybody's beloved characters and franchises to be ruined. These geeks in their bedroom that have all the Star Wars collectibles and all the other movie franchise action figures and figurines and the little Millennium Falcon, the plastic one put back together, but one little plastic piece is broken off, so it's worth $50 less. They're so upset at somebody like Kathleen Kennedy. They'll say, that you, you ruined my Star Wars, and they can't even live with themselves. They say, Kathleen, they loathe her. She should be loathed, but maybe they're directing their energy to not milk, which they shouldn't because it feeds from that. Then what pisses them off even more is then they say, enough of this. My Star Wars has been destroyed. They've got 80,000 collectibles all over the house. They go to sell it on eBay, and nobody wants it. And then they go on eBay, and the damn Ray, the Ray doll, the <laughs> little wretched Ray creature, figurine is selling for more than the old Luke Skywalker stuff from the 70s. The Ray figurine is selling for more, and then they just want to jump and bypass the Foxconn nets. 
Matt, if nobody likes Ray, how could the Ray figurine be selling for more? Well, I don't know. It really is just part of the story here, but it, it could easily be because the knot nilk sets the conditions across the board for to piss people off. The, the knot nilk has created basically a gigantic fake reality, Potemkin Village, whatever that is, out your window. It can push the Ray figurine artificially, like it pushes the price of gold artificially, could just to piss people off. It's capable of that, although I doubt it has ever done it. So I've done a few of these what's called open letters, whatever that is, to, you know, once a year I make the video to the critical drinker, nerd Roddick, saying, when are you people going to see that these movies are made bad on purpose? No, I don't expect a video back or reply or anything like that. And I doubt they ever see it. But I do watch to see how close they're coming. You know, and things are so bad now. Things are so horrible where anybody can see that these movies have to be made bad on purpose because any elementary school could do better, at least in the concept or the storyboarding. Any elementary school can do better. And you and I look at these movie reviewers, I go, when are they, I don't, you know, I'm looking at them critically, like almost saying, well, if they never come around, are they working for Not Nilk? But not necessarily, because they know what what makes them money. They know why they're in business. They know what allows them to stay in business. If I think if the critical drinker came forth and said, um, this guy named Matt made a video, and now I, I see that they're all made bad on purpose and there's nothing to review. I mean, it doesn't leave them with a, with a, a method of... Uh, remuneration from bringing money and it doesn't you know what I mean he, he's kind of screwed so who knows I still don't think they see it I, it doesn't really matter um, we, we don't whether they you know what either way they're working for not no because they're on a frequency some way on the ship of fools they're on a frequency which makes them do exactly what the not milk wants so what they're consciously aware of it doesn't matter they're still serving what we call not milk in the same way but it's so bad, the series and the TV shows. If those many of you throw your TV out, don't watch. They're so abysmal. When, by the way, I am in no way joking, not in for one second joking, when I'm saying collecting up ideas down at the local elementary school would be better than supposedly what the greatest minds at Disney are coming up with. I am I'm I'm 100% serious that I could go to any local elementary school and do better than Kathleen Kennedy and that little sawed off Peckerwood boy Ryan Johnson and Jar Jar Abrams. I could do better than all of them, not me, working with the local elementary school. One last time, not a joke. That just tells you for those that don't watch how bad, how horrible everything has gotten. So they do flirt with the idea that um they do get close in this one regard. Some of them have said, well, there's so much woke stuff, so much social, social justice warrior and diversity representation that nobody wants and race changing of characters. There's so much of that. Some of them have come forth and said that, well, the, the, let's just say I'm one of these movie reviewers and they all have 250 to 400, 800,000 subscribers. Anybody that wanted to make money in YouTube, you know, we, you missed your calling three years ago. Just all you do is bitch about movies and series and do it in a somewhat intelligent way and you'll race to three, four, five hundred thousand subscribers. That also tells you they're doing exactly what the Not Nilk wants. This channel, 11 subscribers, and I don't think I showed you the newest statistics. I think it's 20. <laughs> 20. If you bitch about movies and bitch about Star Wars and Kathleen Kennedy and you go 50,000 subscribers, 70, 100, 150, 250. See, that's just, it's just me, I guess. That's a little tip off that that's what the not milk wants. No, Matt, it's completely organic. People are just sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just shut the whole channel down. Yeah, they're not pushed to the top. What, what was I thinking? So what I was going to say was they do, they do come out and say that there's, there's no way the movie studios are making a mistake at this point. They must know that the fan base, the core base, does not want this diversity pushing. They, they come out and say, they, the studios have to know. that They have to know, because look at the last five movies have failed. They've bombed. So how they're getting, those that aren't, quote, in on it, or they're getting a little confused, the movie reviewers, they're saying, how do they keep doing this knowing that nobody wants it? Well, movie reviewer that's saying that, they knew nobody wanted it before the first time they did it. I mean, again, we talk about focus groups where you bring five people in. Just give them, a, like we've said a million times, give them a beer and a pizza and just ask them, do you like this? In the 40s and 50s and 60s, you'd bring people in and say to people off the street, it's called a focus group. Now with AI technologies and Cray supercomputers and reading everybody's emails and tweets, they know instantly what people want. 
So the movie reviewers, they don't even acknowledge that, but but they are. It's happened so many times. There's been so much bad product. They're saying, well, they must know by now that nobody wants it. So maybe they they don't need profit. So they're, they start to go with that profit area. How could they possibly be wanting to serve the shareholder and profitability if they keep putting out what they must know nobody wants? Look, guys, I really, I don't, most of those in the ship of fools in the river of insanity, they're not in on it. They're not getting secret messages. I don't think, no, I think they're these movie reviewers, they're on, everybody on the ship of fools is on a frequency or download of some kind. Even we have to guard against it from time to time. So they're not in on it. They're not getting, Matt, surely the critical drinker is working for the man and he knows. No, not, no, not necessarily. You, you know, okay, one last Everybody on the ship of fools, for the most part. Even like I've said, even even Melvin P. of the you know who I'm talking about of the Melvin P. and Belinda Gates Foundation. Even he only knows a little bit about reality in his own little bucket. Outside of his bucket, he doesn't understand anything. I'm convinced of this. So why would I think these movie reviewers that have two hundred thousand to a million subscribers know anything? Yet they're still doing what the not milk wanted. But they get they get confused, and it's almost like the download takes over. When they start talking about profitability, again, one last time, they say, surely by now everybody knows that Disney must know that nobody wants these themes because the movies that they keep pushing these themes keep flopping. So then they start saying, well, it's almost like they don't care about profits. And they once they start dabbling on that, then that's like the, the not milk frequency pulls them off. Then they back off. They go, if we go down this road, we're going to end up like talking like this guy Matt in this YouTube video. They almost sense... From a frequency perspective, we, we, I can't continue down this road because it leads to exactly where we, are, where we are here. It's obviously made bad on purpose. If you don't care about profits, th- which we know they don't because they keep doing the same thing, it's obviously made bad on purpose. I mean, it's 100%. It's, there's no even way to argue that on the other side. I would love to argue that against anybody that wants to take a podium against me in a mock Billy Madison type situation. Please, I'm not going to do it against some little troll that has 15 subscribers, some little troll that hangs on every word that I say. If, if there's a movie reviewer that has about the same number of subs or whatever, I'll debate it, absolutely. I mean, what, what evidence is on their side? The, I, I don't have to be genius in my argument. It's what's played out. They had a focus group in 1935 where they asked five people, what do you want? If you put Lizzo, Lizzo and Jack Black appeared in some Star Wars series. Was it Mandalorian? They, this little Grogu, little freaking Yoda baby keeps popping up. They think this little Grogu can just carry profits for a minute. Matt, I thought you said they don't care about profits. Okay, whatever. This little freaking Grogu, you just want to throw him out a window. Jack Black and Lizzo and this horrible roles they played in this part of the Mandalorian. You could just ask somebody off the street. Do you want to see that? They'd say, hell no. I'd run out of the theater if I saw that. Nobody wants it. They know nobody wants it. It's obvious at this point. And what really gives it away is this. Let's just say it was just bad movie after bad movie, but it didn't have any woke themes or the new um, super soldier woman, man, woman, man, woman, man, or whatever that they, them, in the Terminator movie. You don't know if it's a man or a woman. It's, well, it's a woman, but it's very, uh, uh, it's very, that nobody, these themes, let's just say they were just making mad movies, but none of these themes were in there. Constant pushing of the LGB. It just bad movie after bad movie after bad movie. It would be harder to make the argument. If it didn't have all the, I don't know, diversity stuff and race swapping and all the stuff, if it didn't have that, it was just bad movies. Didn't have anything, but just a bad movie on its own, then this argument would not be as clear. But it's not just bad movies, is it? It's all the stuff pushed. What makes my argument, not even an argument, just 100%, is they're not just bad, that these themes that people don't want constantly pushed in their face keep being pushed. It's the social justice warrior, woke, and all that stuff that gives the whole thing away. So we talk about when the not milk does something, there's two, three, four outcomes. It never gets one thing out of it. Well, put the bad movies out because the AI is coming and people will then try to do it themselves and replace the movie studios and indie movies and all the stuff they're going to be able to do with the AI, which was the premise of this video. But also put in all these different camps and classes, starting with the LGB, starting with that and going to Caitlyn Jenner and all that. Push all the agendas. Use those agendas that nobody wants to actually help make the movies bad. And you've accomplished right there two things. One, the movie's bad. People will then take to the AI just as they're going to do over the next few years to make their own movies because the member, because the AI needs to learn from real people. But then if 
these agendas are used to make the movies bad and to ruin franchises like Star Trek Discovery. The only relationship in the entire series of Star Trek Discovery is, you know what, I don't know what I can say, but I'll give you three guesses. I haven't said this for a while, but you're only going to need one. Oh, yeah, Scott cozying up to a... I'm a Billy boy or whatever. Who knows what it was? But that's the only, this, you could say to the Star Trek fans, do you want this? And Star Trek fans would try to be polite and say, well, it's, it's okay on their own time. But in, in my Star Trek, uh, if I have to be honest, no, I don't want that. I don't really want any. A lot of Star Trek fans didn't want to see Riker with Diana Troy. Or they don't want any relations. It's not what Star Trek's about. And later they hinted Worf with Diana Troy or whatever. But they don't want, man, a lot of people don't, well, some people want that. That's kind of kinky or whatever. But they don't want that, but they certainly say, look, I don't want uh, I don't want Rex cozying up with John. Okay, that's not what my Star Trek's for. I don't want the Q coming back and saying, I'd like to really admit something to you, Captain Picard. I've, I've harassed this ship a lot over the last decade and thrown you out light years into the Borg and everybody. Honestly, because I wanted to be close to you. I, I want a, a relationship, a Q-Captain Picard relationship. Nobody wants it. Okay, general summary and conclusion section. I will look to your comments to see if, number one, you generally agree with me. A lot of the old guards usually surprises me. I put something out that I think is going to be considered a little wacky, and the old guard says, yeah, I can see that. You generally agree. Number two, you generally disagree. Put it in the comments. Or three, you think this is the moment when I've lost it, the moment when I've disassoci- disassociated with reality permanently. And I'm not, I don't know. There are psychological terms for that, like schizophrenia, but I mean, there must be new terms that apply just to YouTubers like me. So we'll, we'll see right? Which one of the three it is. Here's the summary. The not milk is very patient. The conditions were set over this entire century to put out nothing but horse shit regarding movies and TV series and beloved franchises like Star Wars with everything ruined across the board. Everybody would agree this stuff totally sucks. Now, my premise, of course, is it sucks and made bad on purpose. How do I know that? Because, again, you could go down to the local elementary school here, and they could do better in terms of storyboarding ideas. They could do better than that sawed-off little Peckerwood boy, Ryan Johnson. They could do better than Jar Jar Abrams and all. They could do better than Kathleen Kennedy and the entire Disney production crew. Well, I don't think they really could do better when Disney does supposedly have these Imagineers. They don't even call them workers. They call them Imagineers, the greatest creative minds in the world. No, of course Disney can do better than the local elementary school and whatever, even a special class in the elementary school, of course. So that means Disney's can do better. It's choosing not to, obviously. It's all made bad on purpose. But the point is that sets the condition. Set condition one. That's condition. That sets the condition for what the next phase of Not Milk is, which is all the real humans, millions and millions, taking to the AI tools to produce movies on their own. Now, again, I don't think for the most part the studios are going to go anywhere. People in their bedroom are not going to be able to reproduce Oppenheimer or major productions with John Williams symphonies and scores and what's the guy's name? Hans Zimmer. And all that Hollywood can do, no, can't be done in the bedroom. By the way, there was no Oppenheimer movie without the score. The the score carried the entire movie. Turn the sound off in Oppenheimer and see what you have. Nothing. The score, the symphony, or the music, the classical music was perfect for every scene, and it was in every scene. Did you notice how the music was 90% of what carried the movie Oppenheimer? Okay. I don't, I don't know if you noticed that. It's in every single scene, which is very rare. Most movies do not have classical music in almost every scene. It's done for drama at certain parts of the movie. So that will exist for the major studios, and that will always be superior to what the person can do in their bedroom. But there will be short movies, whatever, comic book movies. People will do, will take the Spider-Man comic book with copyright issues, and they'll try to run with it. And whatever, the copyright just was uh, off the new the old Mickey Mouse from the 20s the copyright just came off that so people will make a movie with that people will do and the the most important thing to the not milk and it'll never tell you about it it is using it, the millions of more people that flock to the AI tools to learn it can only learn by interacting with a real spiritual being thanks for listening